What is up everyone? I had seen that my old network test video on Margit was getting a lot of questions lately, so I decided that I would make a boss guide to help people who are struggling with Margit and want to better understand his attacks and punishes, along with what has changed in his parry strat. Margit is so difficult because it's really hard to get close to him without the chance of him doing a combo that will catch you no matter what you do. You have to play it kind of medium to far range. I found the best if you want it to be flawless. If you don't want it to be flawless, you can definitely run in there and smack him up <laughs> all you want as long as you as long as you do it safely and, and make sure you heal after. Uh, let's get right into it though with the strafable attacks. So when you first go in there, one of my favorite attacks that he does is this one. This one lets you punish so much and if you time it really right, you can sometimes get three. I'm using a great sword, so I usually go for two because it's safest. So you might be able to get two, three, maybe even four if you're really, really pushing it, but yeah, definitely one of the best. And then after this attack, if you're directly behind him, he will most likely follow up with a tail swipe. So you can sometimes get a cheeky punish in, in between that before he's able to iframe dodge away. This combo right here is another great combo that you can punish in phase one. He does a magic attack and then a swipe and then does that really heavy charged. And that gives you the opportunity to get a couple hits and again I'm using a great sword so if you're using a fast weapon you can probably get three in. I feel like stamina management isn't as strict as it was in other souls and from soft games. Now this attack can you can completely strafe this attack. However, I don't always trust doing the first one, so I usually go for the roll the first attack because I mean you're not gonna punish right away anyways. Strafe this one like that and just punish him. And again he might follow up with that tail attack, so just make sure you dodge it. So some of his magic attacks are really fast, but I found, especially in phase one, as long as you go to the right, if you're rolling to the right, his left, then you can dodge them pretty well in phase one. It's going to change for phase two, but in phase one, if you're in his face, you can just dodge to the side and he, he'll miss. Uh, that's also another common combo that he does right there, where he does the two and then he turns forward, which is like, if you get this, this is such a good attack. It does get replaced, sadly, with the axe in second phase, so you, you won't get to punish it as much as you can in phase one, but definitely worth going for. Now, when we get into phase two, to dodge the axe, you have to dodge the AoE. You have to dodge the AoE. That is the, the hardest part. A lot of people are dodging really early from what I've seen, and that's why they keep getting hit by it. You kind of have to dodge late. One of the most detrimental attacks is the windmill. That's what I like to call it at least, because if you get caught in one of those, you're gonna get caught in at least one other. This attack is what makes phase two so hard. He has a chance of doing this when you're close to him anytime he wants, so it's definitely something that you have to think about. That's why I play medium to far range. One of the most annoying things that he does is his input reading on your heals. So when you heal, there's a good chance that he's going to throw those at you because they will punish you. Make sure that if you go for a heal, it is a heal that you know he cannot punish because trust me, it's, nothing's worse than healing and then having it totally negated. Now this attack is probably one of the hardest to dodge in my opinion. You have to be completely in the perfect position, I would say. You want to be in front of him, but you don't want to be too close. You have to dodge both his attack and his magic attack with the one roll because you cannot roll fast enough to dodge them both separately. A lot of the times, Margit will do absolutely nothing. And that's him wanting to bait you in for an attack. Don't fall for it, trust me. <laughs> that Nothing's worse than going in and just getting smacked up because you're tired of waiting for him. Jump attacks are also very useful in this fight. They can stagger him. I didn't get many staggers though, so maybe with other weapons they that stagger more. Uh, 
could be very useful in fighting him. The range that I found best when fighting him, staying that somewhat far away, not completely in his face, second phase at least. In first phase, it's a little safer to be in his face, but second phase you definitely want to play it more medium to far range. See, that is one of the times that you just luckily dodged that windmill attack. Could not replicate it, tried to replicate it, never worked. Okay, let's talk about parrying. This is the biggest change, I guess, from parrying in the network test, which is a video a lot of people saw. The parrying has not changed much. He doesn't do the same exact follow-up every single time now. He does change it up. However, he does a melee attack. He will not do a magic attack. So you will have the opportunity to parry him again after the first parry. And no, you can't push him off the ledge. Trust me, I tried. In between the parries, you can definitely get a couple hits in. I went with the bleed dagger to build up that bleed damage as well, which is like getting a whole nother crit, which is super damaging. When parrying, you want to make sure that your sword kind of flows with his weapon. The biggest thing you want to look for is when he starts to bring it down at you. you it's kind of a rhythm thing. It's very hard to explain timing without doing it yourself and practicing it. I'm using the buckler, which is one of the easier shields to parry with. Uh, I tried using a medium shield, and it was harder. It was definitely a tighter frame. It's still possible, but you're just going to have to be a lot better with the timing. But it's super helpful that he still does the two attacks in a row, so you still have that opportunity. Let's talk about partials. This is one that a lot of people were confused about, where they'd get what they thought was the noise and the look of a parry but they wouldn't get the parry and they take damage. They are indeed different, as you can tell in the side-by-side. -side. Parry has a distinct sound and a distinct look. They look really similar, but you can definitely hear and see the difference. Getting a partial does not count towards the two parries you need to repost him. And here is my updated version, I didn't only parry him, I tried to use some other tactics as well. And I hope you guys enjoy it.
Well, that is my boss guy for Margit. Of course, there is still room for improvement, so if you guys know any other tactics that could be useful to anyone else, please leave those in the comments so that everyone can see them. We can all get through this together. Raise that ring. Huge thanks to my patrons, and I will see you guys in the next one.